Okay, so we're back on the uh, Ultra 150 project. Uh, like you find with a lot of basket case stuff, there can be challenges in the reassembly that aren't apparent uh, when it's still in totes and cardboard boxes. A couple of the things we've come across. Um, oil injection tank was leaking, not totally apparent why. We thought it was just that the bolt they were plugging the line with uh, didn't have a good seal and so it was dripping. It turned out though that the nipple that normally sits here on the oil injection tank was cracked. Um, really no way to repair that. So what we did is there's a really um, sizable plastic boss cast into these ultra oil injection tanks and so we just drilled it and tapped it for a nylon fitting from uh, the hardware store. And um, with a little appropriate thread sealant, that's a really good repair. It actually is easier to get the oil injection tank out of the boat like this, because you don't have to worry about the nipple when you're, when you're pulling it through. So uh, that was one thing we had to deal with. It's a solid repair to use the thread it and put a nylon fitting in it. Okay, so one of the other things we found on the Ultra is that um, when we uh, went to determine the status of the fuel system, we found out that the in-tank pickup was just totally killed. Um, obviously, the previous, the previous owner was a big believer in ethanol, which I'm a big believer in it for drinking, just not for running your small engines on it. Um, it just completely ate this. I mean, look at this plastic. It's just just completely flimsy. And this is supposed to be screen. Look, here's a brand new one we just bought. You can see that there's, there's screen in there, right? And this is not flimsy. This is hard, hard plastic. So um, the other thing that was crazy is that this thing, we couldn't even pump the tank out because both the main and the reserve, the tubes are completely blocked with green scuzz. These tubes are some kind of copper alloy and they're just Statue of Liberty all through the tube, right? Completely, and the float for the fuel level was just sticky and nasty. So it was really no choice but to replace this. There are used ones of these running around on eBay. They look a little better than this, but not a lot better than this, right? You know, note to self, they're supposed to be white. Brown ones are to be avoided. So then we did get the tank out and um, we decided that uh, the, the best thing to do was completely rinse the tank uh, with solvent and then we um, put hot soapy water in it and let it stand, scrubbed it out and uh, then we let it dry for about a week and a half to get it clean because it just had a bad film you know it's the it's one of those things when you buy a basket case you never know the status of the fuel and if it's been sitting a long time you're bound to have challenges so we also tackle um, conversion to triple overboard water indicator so these each of these now is plumbed to one of the water outlets on the cylinder head. So on a stock Ultra, this one is this one is here. It's a black rubber fitting, and it's plumbed only to the front cylinder head. And if you've ever read about a triple pier or a triple pisser setup, this is what it looks like. Um, normally, the center and the rear cylinder have their uh, overboard dumps right above the jet pump. So we've moved all three of them here so you can readily tell that all three are um, discharging water and you know you don't have a situation where you got a blockage or something going on. Um, that does require rerouting the hoses uh, and you know either injecting the rear fittings full of silicone or epoxy or putting a loop of hose on them, whatever you want to do to block those.